Okay, we'll get started on time to just to make sure we've got enough time for questions and other fun things. Um, this is the reason you don't change your formatting for your slide deck before your presentation. So I am Brandy Lawson, but it doesn't say that. We'll get to that in a minute. Tech Girl, you're here to learn about making a profitable online presence, right? <coughs> Naughty? No. Okay. Excellent. So here's me. I'm Brandy. My Twitter handle, which you will not find on this page, is at the Tech Girl. So feel free to tweet your questions, comments, heckling, whatever. Go ahead and tweet me. Um, Pound Tech Phoenix is our hashtag. Who am I? So why do you care what I have to say? Well, I'm the daughter of an art entrepreneur. My parents opened a restaurant the year I was born. This is them. I look back and I'm like, were well, you completely insane? Hey, what do you mean? Hey, sorry, did somebody start done. recording your session? Yep. Okay, sorry. Because as an entrepreneur myself, I know that, you know, having your own business and having a kid, it's, it's a little scary. But it's thanks to their courage that I'm doing what I do today and helping other people who have their own businesses. So that, that's really a, a big part of who I am. Who else am I? I am the oldest of three girls. There we are. My sister recently got married, so we got fun pictures. I am a wife and a mother. My two-year-old and my husband. But I'm also a total gadget girl, as you can see. I have to present from my iPhone. That's what I do. I'm a marketing technologist. That's the name of my company, Tech Girl. This is what I love to do. I want to help businesses be effective and efficient at what they're doing. No matter what it is they're doing, technology can empower you. And this is my big thing. I'm breaking your slavery to email. You do not need to live in that. It is valuable, but not that valuable. So those, that's a little bit about me and what I do. But what are we here to talk about? We're here to talk about getting more return from your social investment. So I don't care if you're not actually paying for your presence online at this point. You spent some time doing it. You all can do math or you have access to a calculator so you can figure out how much that's actually costing you. So you need to work smarter. Why? Not just because I said so, but partially because I said so, but you deserve it. You deserve to work smarter because you have a gift to give to the world and you need to be able to have time to do that. So that's what we're here to talk about. Well, let's just get right to the point. Social media is marketing. Really, it, it's marketing. If somebody came to you and said, okay, I want you to advertise on television, you'd be like, crap, there's a whole bunch of things I gotta do to prepare for that. I need to know what I'm gonna say and how I'm gonna do it. Well, you should have that same approach with social media because it is marketing. It deserves the same intent and approach as any other marketing, including traditional marketing. So if you are not the best XYZ -er, and you're going to use that on your social media, perhaps you should think about hiring or getting instruction about how to do that. It's marketing. It's serious. It's, it's part of the lifeblood of your business. Your online presence is your brand. It just is. It doesn't matter if you're trying to brand yourself or not. It's much akin to, I don't care if you have a mobile website or not, people are coming to your site on a mobile device. If you're trying to brand yourself online or not, it doesn't matter because it is your brand. So this is something I, I just want you to start to think about in a different light, to approach in a different way. Social media isn't just a throwaway. It's part of your brand. It's part of your marketing. It's what's making your business or your personal endeavor or your volunteer organization chime and go. So back to the title of my presentation here. The Facebook page is not digital marketing. It may be part of digital marketing. But having a Facebook page doesn't mean that you are doing digital marketing. It means that you have a Facebook page. Now, if you have other things to go with your Facebook page, including a strategy, then you're doing digital marketing. So that's what we're going to talk about. So we're going to talk about five steps to a more profitable online presence, to really doing, approaching your, your online president, presence as a piece of marketing, as something that's critical to your business. So step one, start with the strategy. Oh, strategy. That word. 
strategy if you really want to bastardize it. Um, <laughs> but it's, you, it's hard to know where you're going if you don't have a map. Strategy gives you a map to where you're going to go. And it starts with, what do you want to accomplish? You want fame, fortune? Personally, I like shoes, so you know, maybe it's just more money for shoes. <laughs> but you've got to figure out what is your purpose of even doing anything online. Are you trying to establish awareness, expertise? Do you need to build your list? Are you trying to sell something? But so you've got to figure out exactly what it is you're trying to accomplish before you start creating Twitter accounts. You, you've got to figure this out. Next thing is, you got to figure out what you're willing to do to get it. Are you willing to spend time to do it? You can budget some money for it? What are the kind of resources are you going to dedicate it to it? So once you know where you're going, you got to figure out how you're going to get there. And you got to talk very specifically about, all right, I'm going to allocate this much time. I read it recently in a Hootsuite blog post that you can spend as little as six hours a week to have a profitable online presence. I was like, six hours a week? Times was, well, if you I value your time at 40 bucks an hour and 52 weeks a year, that's more than $12,000. If somebody came to you and said, Spend $12,000 with me and we're going to go do some stuff, you'd be like, I don't think so. What are you talking about? Well, that's what you're doing if you're approaching your online presence without a plan. Is you're spending probably the better part of $10,000 a year in your time doing something that has no end goal. So figure out what you're willing to do to get what you're after. The other thing you've got to consider is that you're probably doing other activities. Networking, you're, you're sending out flyers, handing out business cards, you're doing other offline things. They need to coordinate with your online things. So make sure that you've thought about how they work together. Now, if you're intentionally not making them work together, fine. You're being intentional about it. But if you're just haphazardly going after doing things online and then using a completely different logo or different tagline or talking to a different audience offline, then you're not doing yourself any favor. So you got to think, think about how those things job. Another critical part of your strategy, how will you know if you're successful? When do you know if you're done? You've got to decide what's important to that, what you're after, and how you're going to get there. And then you're going to have to track it. There are tons of tools out there, Google Analytics, Facebook metrics. There's lots of things to help you do this. But you have to first decide what is important to you and be able to track it. So we talked about strategy. We're going to build ourselves a map, figure out where we're going. Step two, you got to know who you're talking. All right, great. You want to have enough money for more shoes. And you're going to do that by dedicating six hours a week to building an online presence. Fantastic. Now, who are you talking to? Who's interested? You have to define the target market. No, really, you, you <coughs> have to do this. Everyone is not your target market. It's really not. <laughs> and you aren't your target market either, especially if you've got a service to sell. Because as someone who loves and enjoys and employs technology, I'm not trying to talk to other people and sell them my service who love and enjoy and employ technology. They, they, they probably got what I have to sell. So I'm not my target market. And everyone's not my target market. You have to be very, very specific. The Acme Company sells things to people who live in the Looney Tunes land, and their target market is Wiley Coyote. <laughs> They sell anvils and things that blow other things up, and he is the one that they're selling to. Now, the Roadrunner will occasionally buy things from the Acme company when he gets really irritated with Boiling, but he is not their target market. Just because he buys stuff there doesn't mean he's their target market. Their target market is Wiley Coyote. He spends every day thinking about ways that he can use different Acme products to try to destroy the Roadrunner. It's what he does. Now, they'll get Elmer Fudd in occasionally or Yosemite Sam. They're also sort of nefarious characters that might have use for Acme's products. But that's not the target market. The target market is Wiley Coyote. So you've got to find your Wiley Coyote. You've got to figure out specifically who you are talking to and target everything that you're doing to them. Delay. This is the quote that just kind of illustrates it for you. This is not an easy thing. You know, you hear target markets, blah, blah, blah. You can't market everyone, blah, blah, blah. 
And you think, but you know, everyone kind of has use for it. It's not easy to say, okay, I'm not going to be talking to these people, and I'm not going to be talking to these people, but I'm going to talk exactly to these people. This is critical to your success because the people who need your product or service, when they come to their website, it has to be like you live in their head. They have to be like, oh my gosh, this person knows me inside and out. And yeah, other people may buy your product, but you've got to identify a very specific target market and talk directly to them. So we covered step one, step two, we've got a, a plan. Now we know who we're talking to. Step three is choosing your social channels. As you've heard today from many other people, there's a lot of social channels and they keep growing. Social marketing is, is no longer the wild west and that it's kind of is no longer this unknown, it's maturing, but that doesn't mean there aren't going to be new players or new places coming along. So you can't do all of them. You now have a plan and you know who you're talking to, so that will guide you. Just saying Twitter's not for everyone. Just because they're trendy. This last one, you know, we we're probably not in the right region for that. But these are what was trending recently on Twitter. It probably doesn't relate to what you're trying to do, what you're trying to say, and who you're trying to talk to. So consider what the social network's about, consider who's using it, and just because it's the hottest topic on the planet doesn't mean that it's going to relate to you. <coughs> you have to understand the people that, so Wiley Coyote, great. He lives in a desert. Um, we probably have to mail our magazine to him. If he's going to order from the Acme company, he's probably not ordering online. But you've got to really understand your target market and how they communicate. And different channels may be relevant at different times. So today, a lot of people are on Twitter because this is an event. It's not, we've got Tech Phoenix trending because there's a lot of people here exchanging information and ideas. So great. If your target audience is here, then you might want to be on Twitter for Tech Phoenix, but maybe that's not your primary channel. Stacey talked about primary and secondary channels. You've really got to be very focused about who, what channels you're going to spend your time on and when you're going to spend your time on them. These are just a, a handful of different posts, types from different social media channels. You need to pick the ones that best fit your product or service. Besides knowing where your audience is at and how they communicate, you also want to pick the ones that showcase your product well. <coughs> if you're an Acme company, great. You, you have pictures, but maybe a, a blog about how to use your, your products and Twitter posts about that are best suited instead of Pinterest, where a picture of an anvil is not all that attractive. So you've got to pick the channels that match your audience and your products and service. Once you know where are you going to be posting to, you've got to master those channels. There is so much to know about each individual social network. Pages, groups, chats, hashtag, forward, just all this terminology, all these different ways to use it. You've really got to go master that. You don't have to learn it all on your own. There's experts out there, there's, there's blogs, there's other resources, but you do have to identify and know that you've got to immerse yourself and get to be a master of this channel. Step four, be consistent. You've heard this, I think, several times today um, because it's a true rule of marketing. If one day the Acme company is sending in a catalog to Wiley Coyote and the next day they're tweeting about it and Wiley Coyote doesn't get any catalogs anymore, well, that's probably not going to be great for their business. You've got to be consistent. Part of being consistent is finding a voice and an identity and sticking with it. So you, you have no idea how long it took me to figure out a place to use a monocle because I just had to do it. Um, but find things that are uniquely you, uniquely your voice. It's, it's all about branding, but really it, it comes down to being consistent with your audience. If somebody calls you on the phone one week, and calls you on the phone the next week, has the same kind of type of a conversation, and then the third week they call you on the phone and you're a completely different person, they're probably not gonna call again. Well, that's the whole thing with social media and when you're, you're establishing your online presence. <coughs> Be consistent so people know what to expect from you. One way to help you be consistent 
is to use templates. Checklists, task lists, other templates. It's, as human beings, it's really hard for us to be consistent. We, it's not something that comes naturally to us. So use the tools available to you. Create the tools available. Find tools that will help you with your consistency. Step five, even though it says step four, this is step five. Engage your audience. It's been said a million times, right? These are social networks. Again, I'm not the first person to say this today. Uh-oh. I just got logged out. Stand by. Yeah. And we're back. <coughs> so, no matter what it is you're doing, you have to remember that these are social networks. If you're out there as a business, Please observe the 90-10 rule, at least. 90% about it uh, is helping your audience. So you know who they are, I like Coyote. What he probably needs is more ways to use Acme products. Here's another thing you can do with Acme products. Here's more ways to buy Acme products. So, but adding value, like figuring out what questions they have and answering them. Figuring out what they're after and giving it to them. 10% is selling. It's when it's about you. So this isn't you, you, you. If you're watching a TV show and uh, uh, news is a great example. Like you can tell when they're promoting stuff. Social media is the same. You, it's obvious when things are being promoted. So be authentic. Be value add. Use the nice general. rule. Invite participation. <coughs> so it's one thing to say, all right, I'm going to be social. I'm going to use the 90-10 rule, but people like to be asked to engage. So ask them. Get them to engage. Ask them to speak their mind. Share your story and ask for theirs. So find other ways to be engaging with your audience and, and eliciting that engagement, not just expecting that they will answer. And then you have to do your share. So you're out there. You can't just like things, you have to comment and you have to share and you have to be an active part of the community that you want to engage with. If they're going to respect you, if they're going to engage back, you have to do the same. You've got to be strategic and intentional. I, I, this is my favorite. No one on the planet, not even the largest, largest of the largest companies, has enough time for a shotgun approach to social media. There's too many, it requires too much. If you're gonna do it right and get anything out of it, you're gonna have to be strategic and intentional. So this brings, so this is a little nod to any South Park fans about the underwear gnomes. You know, step three, profit. Mm -hmm. But this is really where it comes down to, is your time is worth something. You can be spending that time serving customers, you can be spending that time networking, you can be spending that time on social media. So if you're intentional about your social presence, you help to grow your revenue, you're shrinking the time that it's taking you to do that, and thus you're increasing your profit. And at the end of the day, if you're going to have a business, even a nonprofit organization, you need that equation to be either equal or up on the profit end. And you're not gonna get there by dumping time into social media that you have not thought about what it's supposed to give back to you and that you have not evaluated for profit. So, I kind of sped through that. This is me, that's where you can find me. <coughs> These slides are up, I'll tweet it afterwards, but um, techgirl.com slash techphoenix. These slides are up there. Any resources that we talk about in q and I'll also share there, but this is the time where you shoot holes in my theory, whatever. Come on. Questions? Yes. Okay, so I don't really have a uh, product or a service that I want to sell. I just have me. I just enjoy talking. Um, should I have like personal accounts separate from like my brand accounts, or is there places where I can have both? So what? Are you trying to achieve by going online? Um, that's a good question, actually. 
<laughs> okay, so, but that, and that's where kind of things kind of start. If what you want to achieve by going online is to connect with the world and see where that takes you, I don't think there's any reason to separate a, a, a brand from you. If, you. if you're just like, I want to connect with the world and I, I want to put myself out there, then, then connect with the world and have personal accounts. Then after a while, if you get to the point where you're like, all right, now I've got a podcast. It's super famous. <laughs> or even if, you, even if your goals change. So, all right, I've connected with the world and I found a bunch of cool people, but now I've also got a podcast and it's a very specific thing that I want to go promote. Then you may create a brand, pre online presence, for that podcast that's potentially separate. But you have to let your objectives guide you. It's like, what are you after? And then it makes it a lot easier to answer the questions about how you should do it. Yes? I think in the brochure it mentioned something about, you were going to talk about a little bit about Instagram. There's oh, specific so w if you're wasting your time on Instagram. So it goes back to who is your audience. If your audience is in the young category, <coughs> if what you're doing is very visual. So your photographer you're probably going to be on Instagram because Instagram is very about pictures and filters and, and those kinds of things. But if you are acne company, you're not going to be on Instagram. It, it, your audience just isn't there. So you really have to think, you have to take yourself out of your shoes and go put them in your audience's shoes. You first have to know who that is. And then figure out where they're at. And if Instagram is where they're at, then you should be on Instagram. But if that's not where they're at, and that's probably not where you should be. Question? So I noticed your, with your branding when you got to LinkedIn, you took away the tech girl. I was wondering why. So on LinkedIn, that is my personal profile. I don't yet have a company page on LinkedIn. And that's back to what the platform is. So LinkedIn, there's a personal page and a company page. That's my personal page because I'm, I'm giving this talk so you can go learn about me and my, my work history there. And then can you tell us a little bit about how your work works? Like how did you make money? What do you do? How does that work? What do you do? What do I do? So I help businesses put technology to work. That usually starts with email and websites. I have a WordPress maintenance part of my business. Um, I consult with businesses to help them fix what's not going well. Usually businesses come to me when they're at a transition point. The stuff that they've put in place, the processes and the systems <coughs> they've put in place are no longer serving them. How do they hear about you? Um, referrals, primarily. Um, I've also got some other joint ventures and I do speaking. I run, run a WordPress meetup group. Because the WordPress community here in Arizona is very vibrant. We are very lucky to have a, a great WordPress group so if that's something of interest, there are meetups all over. But that's part of how I get my name out there is I'm talking to those groups. <coughs> hey, Brandy, um, what, what's a good a good resource for understanding the the demographics of the various social channels? Well, first thing is if, if you figured out who you're talking to, you can go find some of those people. Like if you know that you're neighbor's daughter down the street is on the demographic you're after, you can ask them. You can also follow some of the, like Hootsuite does a great job with their blog posts, informing about what's going on with social and profiling some of the social networks. You can also go act like you're going to advertise on those social networks and learn more about the demographics of who's, who's there. Um, but largely the, the easiest thing to do is to find some examples of your social, of your target market and see where they're active socially. But there are some good blogs out there. Um, any anyone who has a service around social posting is doing a good job of contributing valuable content when it comes to yeah. Stacey Sprout Social does a really good job of sharing that kind of information. So does BufferApp.com. They share a lot of that kind of stat stuff. BufferApp.com. B u f f e r a p. Social. So those are all services that help you host a social, and and most of them, because it benefits them, are sharing that kind of information. Thanks, Stacey. They just yeah. do a lot of analytics heavy stuff. I want to know your secret of engagement. I was in another seminar, and according to Twitter, you're like five times more happy than any other <laughs> seminar. So what is your secret to engagement? Do you flat people in the audience? Uh, 
my, my plants are over there. Because <laughs> she's awesome. She's awesome, and we're not plants. And she talks in trivia. <laughs> That's important. Oh, yeah. Um, I just like to, when I, when I was putting my slide deck together, I very intentionally had 30 slides, which is a ton if you're doing a 40 minute or less talk. But the idea is that I would change slides at least once a minute or maybe more. They're very visual, they give me talking points, but I can also sort of expand on them. So I, I try to keep things going and energetic and not weigh it down with, with too much text up there. That's part of how I try to engage. Do you use Canva? <laughs> so this time around, I did use Canva. Um, it was kind of an experiment, because I hadn't used Canva much before. But yeah, I did use Canva for most of those. I didn't realize you could do presentations with Canva. Or is it just one page at a time? So the graphics are Canva. The presentation is PowerPoint. This what? PowerPoint. Oh. <laughs> I just created images, so I got the. I have a PowerPoint. Oh, you just created images. Yes. Canva. Do you like export? export? Oh, that's awesome. I saved out of Canva into JPEG, and I put it into my PowerPoint. It is. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Canva.com is an online graphics creator. It's very powerful. Yeah. How do you spell that? C A N B A. Canvas. They do have an iPad app now. iPad. Uh, like Canvas, but without the S. More questions? Really? You're out of questions? Oh, good. Um, do you target like, different industries? Like, for example, from like, somebody, a small business realtor? So personally, um, I have been working my target market definition and, and narrowing it down. On the consulting side, I'm, I'm focusing on family-owned businesses in the industrial sector. And the reason that I choose them is partially personal. I come from a family-owned business and I kind of understand that a lot of times family-owned businesses get started with someone who has a, a skill set for that business, but not necessarily a skill set to promote the business. Uh, also, most of the time, they haven't hired marketing, and they kind of need that higher end skill set. Um, and industrial, particularly, they're focused on their existing networks and haven't done a really good job of any sort of online presence <coughs> websites. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? All right, you're letting me off easy. Uh, I'll tweet the URL, but my slide deck's up there, and I'll, I'll post some of the resources we've talked about. Thank you. You've been a fantastic audience.